long rambling conversations and he would share with me, hey, who's here? Here's who I talked to today. You can't tell anybody about it. And the progress that he made step by step by step. Pretty soon he's got this staple of people and he knows he has to be careful. He knows that in the intelligence world you have to take things with a grain of salt. He knew he would be tested with information that may or may not be true to see how he treated it. And he passed the test. And over time, um, the two, Together, we sort of worked out a dialogue, a pitch that he made along the way to different levels of people and worked his way up the food chain uh, and with the message basically that, look, you guys have painted yourselves into a corner with the secrecy and lies and the cover-up for all these decades. I ha I'm giving you an opportunity here to get out of it. You know, I will uh, appeal to a, a young audience. We can explain what the reasons were for the cover-up and, and why you couldn't... Um, couldn't be uh, straightforward with the public, and he made that pitch, and we did an interview uh, uh, on Coast to Coast, and then I did a television interview with him, and the reaction from the UFO community is very pred predictable, ah, that's bullshit. <laughs> and there's no way that uh, any uh, big time intelligence guys or generals or military people are going to tell a rock star anything. That's not happening, that's disinfo. He's being used, he's a tool. Yeah? Um, maybe, mm. and then WikiLeaks happened, and all these emails come spilling out, and it was a disaster for Tom. He was uh, he was crestfallen, he was embarrassed. But the fact is, when that WikiLeaks came out, and all those emails to Podesta, and naming the names of the people that he had been talking to, it proved it was real. He really was talking to these Pentagon folks. They really were helping him uh, learn his way around the subject matter. And although uh, that leak caused a lot of them to scatter, and it was uh, a setback for him. He recovered. So, you know, when he was going to create TTSA, um, I, I was aware of it. And uh, two days after the uh, announcement on the stage in Seattle, he and Lou Elizondo flew to Las Vegas and met with me and, and a, a, bus a prominent businessman in Las Vegas with an interest in this topic. And they showed us two of the videos and, and kind of gave us an idea what they were going to do. Um, and when it became clear that the New York Times was going to do this story, I was kind of miffed because um, I had been allowed to be a fly on the wall about these programs for a long time with the understanding that, okay, be patient, eventually you'll get to report this stuff. And so I kept quiet. I was diligently working behind the scenes about a program. I did not know the name of the program. I did not know the name ATIP until I saw it in the Times. Uh, I knew another program that was created in 2007, started in 2007 by Sen Senator Harry Reid in Nevada. The uh, award of the contract, which was posted um, on, um, on the military uh, contractor site.